From the comfort of your armchair, wildlife films spy into the natural world to bring you pristine images of nature, the filmmakers must get up close. Theirs is a world of patience, unpredictability, and danger. A life without routine. To find out what it's like, let's turn the cameras on them. Finding one's way as a wildlife filmmaker means plunging off the beaten track. You can't learn this trade in school. But two professional tracks lead to the same destination. The trained cameraman with a passion for nature and the biologist who is given a camera to document his work. In both cases, society awards them the dubious honor of being eccentrics working in the remotest corners of the earth. This is exactly where they feel most at home. Cameramen and biologists happily endure hostile environments where nothing goes right. For some, it's a dream come true. The open-air school of wildlife filmmaking offers some extreme courses. So what kind of students enroll? Let's follow in their footsteps to find out. Care to leave your armchair for this? The student must start somewhere. A movie is nothing without props, and in this industry, props have to be carried an awful long way. To the mecca of wildlife where this kind of filmmaking began, the birthplace of man, Africa. Childhood dreams are beginning to come true, but what does reality hold? Simply that our closest relative, the chimpanzee, is a funny and entertaining animal. And where is he to be filmed? More often than not in national parks and reserves, the new untamed Africa. The island of Nagamba in Uganda is a case in point. Many of these chimps were rescued from poachers by local officials and scientists, then introduced to the park. They certainly fit the criteria of funny and entertaining, but for filmmakers who enter the park by boat, there's duty to be paid. These chimps can't swim, but they certainly make good customs officers. Or is it piracy? Either way, it's high time the visiting filmmakers reclaim their confiscated property. For their part, the customs officers return to more pressing business leaving the visitors completely free to go about their business of making a film in a foreign country. They've paid a heavy price, but learned a lesson or two in humility. Wherever they go, wildlife filmmakers are guests who should respect the whims and mores of their hosts. In the school of open-air filming, nothing is written. Even expert gamekeepers make mistakes. For instance, when entering a rhinoceros park, the film crew is told... If it charges, don't move. If it charges, don't move. Why not? Because it will stop before it reaches us. Because it will stop before it reaches us. So the filmmakers stay still, and what happens?
poor eyesight, rhinos will charge almost anything, and they're not camera shy. Even back at camp after a hard day's filming, the director and his assistants must share the African night with their subjects. Such playfulness in adult lionesses is a rare treat for the cameras. It's time to call it a night. Of course, young filmmakers must accept that sometimes they'll make the return journey with little useful footage. So it's back to basics, learning to make a comprehensive documentary on a small budget in your own backyard, a bit like shooting a blockbuster in a studio where you can control every shot. Here, the dive bomber, a kingfisher, is most happy to oblige. He gets a free meal, and the cameraman gets his shot. It's all part of the learning curve budding filmmakers must go through to convince their producers to send them on more exciting assignments. In the wild, if you want the shot, anticipation is the name of the game, you have to know your subject, what he likes eating, and which restaurants he frequents. In this case, fishing boats. Even in urban environments, you can't let your guard down. Seagulls are nervous birds during mating season, and the harbour offers little protection for well-intentioned filmmakers. The gulls like to stay as close as possible to the harbour for the fishermen's waste. Their numbers have grown so dramatically that property is at a premium on the waterfront. The gulls nest wherever they can. And the crew must give their tenants ample notice before they terminate the lease. It gives the sound engineer a chance to get really close to his subject. As long as the levels are adjusted accordingly. The crew may be ready to move, but the guests aren't. The chicks must be fully grown before they abandon the nest. Another lesson in humility for a film crew waiting for a big break. Overseas assignments are a chance for wildlife camera crews to earn their spurs in the way they like best, working in some of the remotest places on Earth. Welcome to the jungles of Indonesia. Mm -hmm. 
We're being eaten alive, it's awful. First it's tree ants, now it's mosquitoes. We're being devoured. In such an uncomfortable environment, the filmmaker should keep a low profile, but not so much for comfort's sake as for professional expediency. Getting up close requires ingenuity so as not to disturb the actors. People in primitive societies believe when a camera is pointed at them, their soul is stolen. This orangutan will never know it's happening to him. Filming domestic activity like bed making calls for a different kind of rigging. And the cameraman never leaves home without this. His life often hangs by a thread or a piece of duct tape. In fact, going to work in the rainforest is a bit like preparing for war. A whole cottage industry springs up out of nowhere to get those up-close and personal shots into your living rooms. Every good actor soon learns to forget the presence of the camera. Known as the Red Man of the Forest, orangutans are the largest tree-climbing mammals in the world. But they face extinction due to poaching and forest clearance. It takes patience to become accepted in the wild, but in time the cameramen are able to follow the orangutans wherever they go, run where they run, rest where they rest, and even eat what they eat. The pain of getting to the right location, the mistakes, disappointments and dangers are all forgotten, for now at least. Toi aussi tu veux des mamours. Toi aussi tu veux des mamours. Hein? Ton petit frère il veut des mamours. Hey. Human intimacy with the natural world must be balanced with respect and caution. Filmmakers can relax in the company of young animals and females, but not in the presence of an adult, dominant male. He's reached a dead end on his stroll down the jetty, and his presence is not to be taken lightly. Ah, oh, putain, ça c'est une bonne idée. Le, le papa, come on, come come. It's. Tu pas dire. Non, 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 Oh la perche Oh j'ai le palpitant qui va à 100 000. Ah oh, les bonnes idées Ah oh, les bonnes idées
This female bathes with humans in the only bathroom for miles around which has any soap. So often for filmmakers, the simple fascination animals have with our behavior provides an enduring portrait of theirs. For chimps at the Nagamba Reserve in Uganda, fear of human contact is non-existent. They're so inquisitive, the cameraman's job becomes almost impossible, however close he wants to get. Like their cousins, the bonobos, our closest relative in the wild, chimpanzees not only share 98.6% of our genes, but our obsession with toys, too. We share many habits and interests with animal primates, like hygiene and attention to physical appearance. Apes even seem to be able to make sexual judgments about us, perhaps because we look like them. Women present no rivalry and become the focus of special attention. Sometimes intimate moments across the evolutionary divide can go a little too far. <laughs> the Barbary macaques of Gibraltar put chimpanzees in the shade with their appetite for social contact. They're the only free-ranging monkeys left in Europe, even though they behave more like city slickers than responsible primates. These fearless monkeys are the responsibility of the British Army. Legend has it that if they disappear, British power in Gibraltar will collapse, so the British ensure their stocks stay high. They hang out proudly on top of the rock, reserving the right to help in any way they can. Recording up close to cover the din of gulls, a macaque takes the opportunity to crash test the mic before filming. Very professional too. Intimacy with these animals is far from compatible with the task at hand, filming. <laughs> so, what's the ultimate high point in a wildlife filmmaker's career? Surely one of them must be here in the Virunga Mountains of Rwanda. When gorillas move through the dense forest, they burp to alert others to their presence and to ascertain who else is around. <coughs> Cameramen must do the same, make BVs or belch vocalizations. If they don't, a mountain gorilla caught by surprise may charge. Fortunately, this sound engineer knows what to do. First off, she avoids direct eye contact. That would be a challenge. 
she must submit to his first move. Then she must satisfy his curiosity. After all, she is in their territory. There is a mutual fascination between man and creatures in the wild. But it is a delicate balance which filmmakers must learn to preserve. Wildlife filmmakers often risk their lives for their best shot. Getting intimate with cheetahs is cheeky, if not downright foolish. What if a cheetah wants to get intimate with them? A two-meter-high steel frame could make an excellent vantage point to spot his favorite prey in the tall grass, the Thompson's gazelle. Only when the hunter is back on the ground can the cameraman cut to the chase. Zero to 45 miles an hour in just two seconds. With top speeds of well over 60 miles an hour, the cheetah is master of the African flat. This is filmmaking heaven with a long lens for safety. Filmmakers aren't the only ones who have to learn their business. the Ambazali National Park in East Africa, this young elephant is eager to stand out from the crowd. His fully deployed ears and sunken head show promise of true grit. Fortunately, his family seem happy to give him free reign and don't interfere themselves. The cardinal rule of filming on the African plains, never stray too far from your vehicle. The same rule holds for the frozen tundra of northern Canada. In the Arctic Circle, cameramen must be specialists and their equipment up to the job. The tundra buggy may serve these tourists well, but die-hard filmmakers must expose themselves to their subject, one that's no less impressive than the cheetahs of the African plains, the polar bear. They may be slower than cheetahs, but they're infinitely stronger, the largest carnivore on land. and they're reputed to be the only bear that considers human beings as prey.
Even though feeding these bears is now banned, the giants of the north can smell a warm-blooded mammal, like a cameraman, from miles downwind. As usual, the problem for the crew is how to get up close and personal with their subject. With a powerful enough lens, the crew can leave the vehicle and film in safety. The bear's rough foot pads give them purchase on the snowy ground. Well, most of the time. When winter smothers the Arctic light and many polar bears hibernate, cold weather filmmakers move to the opposite pole. Here you can work 24 hours a day. What a paradise. If only we had a workable script, because how do you shoot a rarely filmed leopard seal hunting penguins underwater at full speed? That's the dress rehearsal filmed from above. Now for the real thing. A special underwater camera called a pole cam helps, and that dry suit is warmer than you might think. This friendly Weddell seal provides some amusing pictures. would stand little chance against the leopard seal. The only solution is to get down there with them. specialized skill and you need plenty of air to film the leopard seal because you will breathe a lot. The underwater stage is set, both parties sizing each other up. If you think this leopard seal makes a good swimming partner, you're dead wrong. His one-inch canine teeth have recently killed a British scientist in these very waters. The problem is the seal is not hunting. It's got too much time for the cameraman. This was not in the script. An experienced cameraman knows not to push his luck. The script definitely needs some more work before the next day's shooting. Today's task is to find a leopard seal that's too busy to pay attention to the cameraman. The opportunity presents itself quickly, but will it make comfortable viewing for nature lovers? Thank you. 
Surely this will be censored, discarded onto the cutting room floor. Filmmaking is full of surprises. Rather than being aggressive, this leopard seal brings the cameraman a gift. Even if the pictures seem cruel, cameramen are trained to keep filming whatever the situation. What constitutes poor footage one day may come in handy the next, whether the cameraman's being bothered by a leopard seal or by a dugong. These gentle mammals, sometimes known as sea cows, are related to the manatee and live off the northern coasts of Australia and the South Pacific. This one from an island near the archipelago of Vanuatu has been living alone since its mother died. So its primitive brain confuses the diver with its own kind. Not only is the dugong extremely sociable, it's also looking for a mate. Taken completely by surprise, the cameraman panics in the face of one of the most passive mammals on the planet. The cameraman soon realizes he's overreacted and offers the lonely dugong a little reciprocation. Sadly, the dugong has since passed on, not with a broken heart, but with old age. The hearts of wildlife filmmakers lie here, in distant locations, in hospitable climates, and great discomfort. The Antarctic is a perfect setting. Weather conditions can ground even the most stubborn underwater cameraman for days. Shooting topside for a change can bring unexpected rewards after a week sailing in raging seas. The first task is to set up camp and organize provisions. That's if the locals don't mind. Skewers are notoriously territorial, vigorously defending that patch against any intruder. Well, almost any. Weather permitting, the crew haul equipment down to the waterfront for an appointment with their subject. This time, fur seals jealously guard harems of females. They also have an eye for the property of the visitors. It's not smart to leave valuables unattended. You might not get them back. Diversionary tactics, it's a good try. No hard feelings, all in the spirit of documentary filmmaking. <laughs> Yes, there are lots of myths and misconceptions about the filmmaker's craft. Take these albatrosses, the great pilots of the southern seas. Permission to land? 
whenever and wherever. Takeoff is even worse. Wildlife filmmakers don't have the resources to be in two places at the same time. Look what they've come back to. No cozy campfire with an evening meal prepared by the staff cook and not even free access to their tent. The elephant seal spends up to 90% of its time underwater, so don't hold your breath for it to move when it's on land. Unlike polar bears, elephant seals are totally indifferent to the presence of human beings. If the territorial skewers can't shift this guy, nor can he. There's only one thing for it, a night under the stars. Except this is summer in the Antarctic when the sun never really sets on the wildlife cameraman. At least he's found a soft pillow. Vandalizing skewers, inquisitive seals and hellish weather go with the territory of being an eccentric filmmaker. Then along comes an encounter that will forever be engraved on the cameraman's memory. In 1988 on an island in the Crozet Archipelago in the southern Indian Ocean, scientists find a young female orca stranded while hunting elephant seals. Scientists and filmmakers join forces to turn a ton load of killer whale back towards the open sea. top predator remember how it was saved by human beings. Orcas have remarkable memories, so maybe it will. Biologists and wildlife filmmakers struggle constantly against the temptation to think that animals are much like us. Sadly, perhaps, they must stick to the facts and keep their thoughts to themselves. In the open ocean, where visibility is poor, a cameraman captures fleeting glimpses of what an animal may be thinking, thanks to their evolved and often playful curiosity. But how do they really see us? As playmates? Filmmakers remain on a permanent quest, traveling the seven seas to hazard some guesses. The South Pacific is a playground for both man and animals. Off the Polynesian island of Rurutu, another encounter illustrates the magical affinity marine mammals have with us. With marbled skin and pointed fins, this young whale is a rare hybrid. It is a cross between a humpback and a blue whale, the largest animal ever to inhabit the planet. The youngster exhibits an insatiable curiosity for those around it. Like any young mammal, it devotes most of its free time to play.
The crew are happy to join in, while the watchful parent ensures that the impulsive youngster doesn't get into trouble. Being a hybrid, part walloping blue whale, it's at least three times the normal weight of an ordinary humpback. The likable kindergarten heavyweight doesn't know its own strength. Shaking off its parent for a moment, it heads topside to have a look around. Spy hopping, it's called. Gotcha. The steady hand of a captain at the wheel is an indispensable part of a film crew at sea, especially when filming live action like this risky sequence in Corpus Christi, Texas. That's captain on his skimmer. And if we venture a little too close there, you might holler at me. We will give you a wider bird. Uh, yes, Skipper, that is a Roger. Uh, if you encroach too closely on us, we will acknowledge. Thank you much, and safe sailing. The pilot must provide speed, stability, and safety for the cameraman to stay in sync with the bow wave acrobats, hitching a ride with a 300,000 ton monster. The same bottlenose dolphins show off their acrobatic skills back in the South Pacific on Rangiroa Atoll. What's their perspective on a cameraman exposed to dangerous open waters? Judge for yourself with the arrival of a menacing silver-tip shark. The dolphins seem aware of the diver's vulnerability. They wheel around the predator, nosing him away. When one dolphin surfaces for breath, the others stay close to keep up the pressure. They take it in turns until reinforcements arrive. It's a job well done. And they surface again for a victory parade. Bottlenose dolphins seem to show the same protective behavior towards humans as they do towards their own young. Cameraman shows his appreciation before moving on to his next assignment. A slick of animal grease points the way to a banquet of gargantuan proportions. A blue whale that lost its way has mysteriously fetched up to die in a lagoon in New Caledonia. First come, first serve to 18 tons of red meat. Tiger sharks can't believe their luck.
Knock and a team of filmmakers. Boat, helicopter, and cage are scrambled into action before the carcass is shredded by this pack of aggressive scavengers. There's concern for the cage. It's tethered to both the boat and the carcass by heavy marine rope. The cameraman must stay with the action as long as possible. But then things start to go wrong. One of the largest sharks tangles with the line and can't break free. It's a brutal tug of war between the shark and the crew, with the cameraman in the middle. Finally, the shark escapes. But it could have been different. Filmmakers never look back. The next challenge may only be a continent away. And with new technology and greater knowledge, where will they go next to spy on the natural world?